Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Minecraft video and in this one we're going to take a look at something really quite awesome. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a survival bunker. Now before all of you fly down to the comment section telling me, hey you've built one of these before, yes I'm well aware that I have done a video like this before, I'll put a link to it on the screen and also down in the description, but this one is going to be considerably better. There are a bunch of things missing from the previous bunker, things that I think are definitely necessary, so we're going to be including all of those in today's video, as well as a ton of really awesome redstone contraptions. I can't wait to get started on this one, so let's crack on. So first things first, we're going to need an entrance into this place. Now I have to say, I'm usually pretty good at hidden entrances, I was trying my best to come up with ideas for the different hidden activation devices you could use, I could do torch keys, I could do host switches, other things like that, but then I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool if we just threw an item onto the floor, and that's what opened everything up. So that is what we're going to build. All we have to do is clear out a little bit of space underneath here. We're going to knock out approximately a four by three area. And then underneath this block right here, I'm going to place a block with a detector rail and then a hopper minecart on top. Now, if we throw an item on top of this block, you can see that that actually gets picked up by the hopper minecart and drops on through, which means that we can just take a comparator output from that hopper minecart and run it into some form of redstone contraption. For example, a sticky piston facing across. Now, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to run the comparator output into a block, which is going to go into this redstone done, which is going to go up into this block, redstone torch, and then we're going to have a sticky piston facing across right there. Then we can place some grass on its face and also some grass up there. And as you can see, you can't see it. I mean, if you were walking past, you would have absolutely no clue that there is any base there, but if we throw a block on top of this block, you can see it drops down, and then our piston retracts. So we go, we now have ourselves a secret entrance. So I throw an item on top of this block, then that will retract the piston, and we can pop inside, then grab the item from inside the hopper minecart, and that will shut off the piston. Everything is closed up behind us, and we're completely hidden away. But, Obviously, if we want to get out, we can't at this point in time, so we need to place a button on the side of this block so we can hit that, that will retract the piston, then we can pop on outside. Bit of a progress update for you guys, I have added in a seven block long ladder. So, starting from this block right here, just underneath your grass, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, dropping down into this space right here. Now I'm going to warn you, you are going to have to get your digging hat and boots on right now, because we're going to clear out fairly massive space. I have discovered the strangest bug. Just a random minecart sound in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> can anyone can anyone explain to me why this is happening? I, I thought it was coming from here, but apparently not. Anyway, I've cleared out a 15 by 9 space. You should do the same thing too. With my game fully restarted and back to normal, we are going to start our work on decorating this thing. And what I'm going to do is I am going to place red hardened clay all the way around like this. So we're going to create a bunch of panels in these sorts of areas. Then we're going to skip a block and do another three by five panel. So that right there was five blocks. Let's go across like this. And then on this side, once again, we're going to skip a block and do it in this area right here. Yep, that area right there, one, two, three, four, five. And then once again, three blocks going around like this. And these are basically going to make up your wall areas. Now, if you're wondering why we're skipping all of these blocks, it's because we're actually going to be doing a framework out of spruce wood logs that I personally think is going to look really quite cool. So just make sure that you've got all of these in place. Final one now, you can chuck those in a little bit like that. Now then, you want to grab your spruce wood blocks and we're going to place those all the way across the floor just like this. Now all of them are going to be facing upwards because I personally really quite like the top texture of the spruce wood blocks. I mean, you could do whatever you really want with this. This is just an idea of the sort of designs that you can go for. But then we're going to chuck spruce wood going up in each one of your gaps. You see, that's why I placed it in the gaps. So it's nice and easy to work out where you're going to be placing in your spruce wood pillars and they'll make their way up like this. And then you want to repeat exactly the same ring in the ceiling as well. So just chuck in all of those blocks and just try your best to do it better than I am because clearly I can't use my mouse properly today. Lovely stuff. This is looking good. So now we're going to place in the floor and for that one we're going to be using spruce wood once again. But we're going to be placing in the slabs or they can be full blocks if you're really rich and you don't want to, you know, save wood by using the slabs. So you can place those in like that all the way across the floor section. And then for the ceiling, we're going to be doing a pretty similar thing, but instead of being 
upside down slabs, they are going to be upside down slabs, but they're going to be like this. So upside down slabs on the ceiling. Yeah, my, my brain seems to be getting very confused today. Smashing, but it is extremely dark in here. We can't see a thing. So we're going to place some glowstone up in the center there and some glowstone up in the center there. And because it's a five by five area, obviously it should be slap bang in the middle. And then we're going to add in, yep, just a tiny bit of detail like that. I mean, as I've said many times, I'm no Grian. Okay, if you want Grian videos, check out Grian's channel, but that's as good as it gets from me. Now it's time for the redstone stuff. Now according to the internet, yes, I did do some research before this video, one of the most important things for a survival bunker to function is waste disposal. You need to be able to get rid of rubbish really easily. So we're going to build a super simple little redstone contraption right here, right next to the entrance of the place, which as you can see, I've now got a door right here. All we need is one trap chest up at the top right here. The trap chest is to stop the items falling down into the rubbish bin before you've closed the chest, because otherwise you might put something in by accident, for example, a diamond pickaxe, and then have it chucked out, which wouldn't be particularly good. Then we want to go a couple hoppers down like this. We're going to run those into a dropper. Then we're going to take a comparator output from this dropper. That's going to run out into a block with redstone dust out here. Then we need a block on either side with a repeater running with redstone into the side of that comparator. Then we're going to need a repeater with a block and then some redstone dust right there. So if we were to place some items on the inside of this thing, for example, 64 bits of spruce wood, you can see that when we close that chest, all of those start being dropped out. Next on the priority list is of course food. Food is very important for any form of survival bunker. So we're going to create a fairly old redstone contraption right here known as a bread maker, which is essentially a fully automatic wheat farm. Now what we need to do is take out a couple blocks like this. We're going to place dispensers facing in each one of these directions. And we're going to fill all of these dispensers with bone meal. That's what's going to be making all of our wheat grow. Then we need to take out that block right there, place in a sticky piston, and then we need some dirt down at the bottom. Now that dirt is going to be retracted back and forth, which is going to automatically break our wheat. So we can just hold down the right click button, placing in the seeds, they'll be bone milled and then it'll be broken instantly. So now it's time to hook up the redstone for it. So as you can probably tell, I've had to clear out quite a bit of space for this one. You can see we've got the full panel there, plus an extra block. And then we have got a bunch of space from top to bottom as well. But the input block is going to be this block right here. We're going to place a lever on that one so we can toggle this thing on and off. And then we're going to run a redstone output from that thing into this two by two space right here. So then you want to place some redstone, a comparator, and then redstone running around like that. Now if we set that comparator in subtract mode and flick this lever, you can see that that turns the comparator into a redstone clock, which is going to be perfect for all of our bone meal dispensers. So we're going to run the redstone output from that one up a little bit like this and into this system right here. Now what that will do is, is it will power all of our dispensers a lot of times. Okay, we're going to have a rapid fire redstone clock, which is perfect for all of the bone meal dispensers. Now we're going to do our piston retraction system. And the way that we're going to do that is by placing a redstone torch on the side of that block with two hoppers running back and forth into one another. And I will warn you, it's a little bit tight down here. So you might have to do some jumping around, but then we can place an item on the inside of those hoppers and that will bounce back and forth. But then we place some redstone dust on top of this hopper right here, which should hopefully lock the system. And we're going to run a comparator output from that one. That's going to be going into this block right here. And we're going to have a couple redstone dust, a sticky piston facing upwards with a block on its face, then a repeater set to two ticks, some redstone dust, and then a lever to redirect the redstone current because we need there to be a redstone torch on the side of this block, which will cause that piston to be extended. Just a quick thing, the item that you placed inside the hopper actually has to be a non-stackable item. That's very important and something that I completely forgot. But anyway, finishing touches now. We need to till this soil right here. We also need to pop around the back, break this block, and then replace that one with water. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky to do. We just wanna place a couple blocks going around like this, and that should give you a good water hole, and then you can place in the water just like that, which will keep this soil hydrated. And then we can place our bone meal on the inside of all of our dispensers. So we've got bone meal in there, and bone meal in this one as well, and bone meal in that one too. And of course, bone meal in the back one. So there's five dispensers in total. But then when we flick this lever, we should see that we've got a fully functional bread maker system, which will create plenty of wheat. See, I told you I wasn't lying. This thing's awesome. <laughs> For the second time today, I've punched a rather large hole in my wall because we're going to be creating 
a chicken farm in this area. Obviously, the wheat farm is pretty good for getting food. I mean, that's that's handy, but a chicken farm is a better source of food, and also chicken farms are fully automatic, which means that you can get tons upon tons of chicken really very easily. Now, we're actually going to be working backwards a little bit here, so this is going to be our output chest. Then we're going to have a hopper right here with a slab on top. That's where the chickens are actually going to be dying, unfortunately. Then we're going to have a dispenser running into that slab, and then we're going to have some chickens on top of these two hoppers. So the chickens are going to lay their eggs, they're going to make their way into that dispenser, they're going to be dispensed out, baby chickens will be created. When the baby chickens grow up, they will grow up into the larva that is going to be occasionally dispensed by this dispenser right here. So hook up our automatic dispenser is going to be really simple. All we need to do is run a comparator output from that dispenser right there. That's going to be running into a block with redstone dust out the back here. We're going to have a block with two blocks facing in this direction, a repeater, and then some redstone dust. So that is the automatic redstone clock circuit done. Then we just need a redstone here, and then a block here, and a block here, and that is everything completed. That's a really simple automatic dropper circuit. So now what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in a few of these blocks around here just to make a sort of shape and basically pretty things up just a tiny bit. That right there is going to need to be a block and then I'm actually going to cover most of this with glass but we might as well place a ceiling on as well. We do still have one more circuit left to do. So I've just popped out the back and we're going to place an observer running down into this dispenser right here. So the face is pointing upwards and then obviously the redstone output is running down into the dispenser. We're then going to place some redstone dust on top of that observer right there, a comparator, and then we're going to create a really large hopper clock. So that's going to run all the way around like this, basically making its way around there. And on the inside of this thing, we're going to place an item once everything is hooked up. And that will cycle around occasionally sending an output through this comparator which will send two outputs into the dispenser, which means that we should get lava dispensed really, really quickly. So you should say it gets dispensed and then it also gets retracted instantly. Now that is absolutely perfect. So now we can fill in all of this space right here with glass. That's looking good and glass up like that. So we now have a window into the chicken farm and then we can pop up to the top, make our way through here, breaking blocks left, right and center. And we can start throwing in all of the chickens up in the top right here. Now you may want to make sure that they can't escape. Obviously you're going to be throwing a lot of eggs. I have the luxury of being in creative mode, which means I can just do it a bit like this. All right, our next plan of action is to create an automated redstone enchanting system. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to knock out all of these blocks in this formation right here. Then I'm going to place in a whole bunch of bookshelves making their way around just like that. And in the center, we're going to place one enchanting table right there. Now at the minute, that doesn't look particularly exciting, but we're going to place in some levers in each one of these locations. So we've got levers in a sort of triangle, arrow type thing out the back, and we've got one lever on either side in the center, and then once again, the three levers right there. And we're going to hook up all of these levers to individual pistons to allow you to retract individual blocks right here, allowing you to get different leveled enchantments or alternatively, just to retract the entire floor, which will give you the max level enchantment in the enchanting table. Let's start things off with the difficult ones, which is these two levers right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop under the lever location, I'm going to place in an extra slab to make that a solid block, then a sticky piston facing downwards, a redstone block on its face, we're going to place a repeater right here, running into a sticky piston facing upwards, placed on the edge of that repeater, and then we're going to have our spruce wood on top there. Now, believe it or not, that is the tricky one. So let's do the same thing on the other side. So we've already got ourselves a solid block, which means we can place in a sticky piston and then our repeater. And then the sticky piston facing upwards on the edge of that repeater there with the spruce wood on its face. Now, all of these are going to be considerably simpler because all we need to do is place in a sticky piston just like that with a redstone block on its face. And then next to that redstone block, we're going to place in all of these sticky pistons. So right there and right there. Once again, spruce wood on top and the sticky pistons in all of these locations as well with the redstone blocks and then the sticky pistons facing upwards with the spruce wood on their faces. Obviously, if you've got a different design to your bunker, you're not using spruce wood, then don't use spruce wood, okay? It's not, it's not necessary. But if we flick this lever, you can see we can retract individual pistons, which means that we can have the enchanting table accessing certain bookshelves. 
it seems like a pretty smart design to me. And if you flick all of the levers, then we have full access and we can get the full level 30 enchantment. Once again, I've punched another massive hole in my wall. This time we're making way for the super smelter system that we're going to be creating, which will allow us to get lots of smelted items really very quickly. Now, the way that we need to build that is we need to place a line of furnaces down on this layer right here. So we've got a block right there, and then we've got one, two, three, four furnaces, just like that. Then on top of all of those hoppers, we have got hoppers. Yeah, I, I messed up the words there, just completely ignore me. But then we've got a powered rail on the end here, and a powered rail on the end here, with a bunch of regular rails going through the center, and then a block on either end, just like that, which will stop our minecart from flying off the edge. Then we can just pop out the outside right here, take out a few of these blocks, and we need to run our hoppers into this block right here. So this block, and then just run the hoppers across like that, and that means that the items are going to be dropped out of the furnaces, taken across like this, and put into the chest down at the bottom. So now we need a chest on top of this minecart rail, and also a chest out like that to create a double chest, and then we need a chest down at the bottom here, which is going to be our output. Then we need to find some way to get around the back here, because we've got a tiny bit of redstone to do. We're going to take a comparator output from this chest right here, and then run it into that minecart rail. So we're going to do that by placing a block, then a slab, then a comparator, running into a block. We're going to have to take out a few extra blocks right here because we then need a redstone torch, which is going to go into this redstone right here. And then we run the redstone down like this and then up a little bit like that. So we're going to create that sort of system right there, which looks like a slightly wonky smiley face. And that will power that minecart rail there, which means that when we place in this hopper minecart, that will travel back and forth by default until we fill in this chest with items. So say for example, for some bizarre reason, we decided to put red hardened clay inside the system. You can see that if this minecart rail was in fact powered by a redstone torch, then the hopper minecart would stop underneath that chest, it will fill up with items, and then it will place them in the hoppers equally. So we have got an even number, or at least a fairly even number of items in each one of these furnaces, which means that you essentially have like a furnace array that smelts four items at once. And that seems pretty good to me. And it's also incredibly simple, as you can see right here. I have done a little bit of prettying in this area right there. I removed all of the stone that was behind it, because let's face it, that was really, really ugly. And I've replaced it with the red hardened clay. And now this thing is looking like part of the build. And if you're wondering how you get coal in, yeah, there's there's no real fancy way to do that. You just have to place coal in all the furnaces, but they're very easily accessible, so you really have no excuse. Anyway, we are moving on to another redstone contraption right here. We need to create some form of clock to let us know what time it is, because obviously this is this is a bunker. We're completely under the ground. We have no way of knowing what time it is. Obviously, we could use a Minecraft clock, which we've all seen before, but they're pretty boring. I mean, we like redstone on this YouTube channel, so let's knock out all of these blocks, replace them with redstone lamps, and create a cool redstone lighting system. All I've done here is I've knocked out a small space above our module right there, and we're going to place a daylight sensor on this block, and we're going to run the redstone running out and round across like that. And we're going to set this daylight sensor in to night mode. Now, obviously, right now, it's pretty dark in this room, which means that all of the redstone is lit up. But what we have to do now is we need to take out a few blocks going right the way up to the surface. Now, the only thing that you might notice is, is that obviously that is quite a big exposure. If a player was to walk past, obviously they would notice that massive hole right there, probably jump in and discover your bunker. So what I'd suggest doing is grabbing yourself a piston, and that should help to hide things away just a tiny bit. So we place in the piston right there, the piston is a completely transparent block, and if we take a look at it from above, I mean... Yeah, it is still noticeable. You could perhaps help things out by placing a stone pressure plate on top, and that would make things pretty much invisible. It, it is it is noticeable-ish, but it's definitely better than having a hole right the way down through to your bunker. Time for some final finishing touches. Right, what you want to do is you want to replace any blocks that you have removed. For example, this one right here. So that's now looking pretty. Now I'm going to cover this wall in storage, so I'm going to have chests in all of these locations going across like this and then of course i still get a ton of questions people asking me how i place chests next to each other all you have to do is grab yourself a trap chest instead and then you can place them in between one another like that the number of questions that i'd say that's probably one of the most frequently asked questions on my youtube channel so there we go that is the storage system done now we have the redstone clock we need oh we need water of course this is a bunker, a survival bunker. We need some form 
of water storage system. So I'm going to place in a bunch of blocks like this and just make everything look pretty. I'm going to place water there and water there and there we go. We have ourselves an infinite water source. Now I feel like the redstone lamps out the back here actually need themselves a bit of a name. So I think I'm going to grab myself a sign and we're going to call these the danger detector. Yeah. All right, so this is the danger detector. Obviously, if it's really dark, then all of the lights will be switched on, which means that the danger detector is running at full blast. And obviously, with all of the redstone lamps off, that means we can just head on outside. And of course, we just hit this button right here, and that means that it should be daylight. So let's do a quick recap of everything that we've built in today's video. First things first, we have got the item catcher secret entrance system, which allows us to drop down into the actual bunker itself. Then inside the bunker, we have got a fully functional bread maker that is super compact. We've got a garbage system, which allows us to throw out any rubbish. We've got infinite water source. We've got ourselves a chicken farm, which seems to be working pretty nicely at this point in time. Then over here, we have got ourselves a super smelter, a toggleable modular enchantment system, a storage system, and also a danger detector clock. Now I would say that is a pretty awesome redstone survival bunker. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.